For example, as you thought I was a prick when you first met me because you'd never met me, and that was yeah, the first but that time. Wasn't through, that wasn't that was through the first, Instagram. I know, but it was though. <laughs> it was though, wasn't it? Well, because no, it was actually because I, it. You, I saw you on Instagram. You were really vibrant. I was like, I'd really like to meet this person, and then we were actually working in the same space. But you used to walk around, and I'd just be like. He's a prick. <laughs> I was a prick back then, yeah. I've grown a lot. I was a prick back then. I was that is king. so funny. It's like, was it because of Instagram? No, it was real life, Jay. It was real life, <laughs> you. <laughs> hey, I'm Jay Woodard. I am a creative director, a photographer, and videographer of the Ed32 agency based in the south of Ireland in Cork. Hi, I'm Judy Russell. I'm a video coach and founder of the Vid Academy. Hi, I'm Jen Bryan, and I'm the co-founder and chief marketing officer of a digital marketing agency called Velocity Growth. Hi, I'm Sean Horn. I'm a business mentor and coach. I'm also the founder of the national network for women in business called The Club. And I also am the ambassador for Champion Green. Three, two, one. Hello, I'm well... Jay's now actually laughing at me because I just did three, the two, count. one. <laughs> I don't know why you do a countdown. Just start. I <laughs> always do it. It's like I psych myself up. I do it all when, the time. When when you go live on Instagram, do you count down with the countdown out, no, out loud? Do you know what? That's what I'm forgetting to do. It would be much better if I did my little countdown every single... I'm on, I'm on Instagram too much. Anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm sorry for the rude interruption from my fellow podcaster, Jay. but. Welcome to this week's episode of Unbranded. I am excited for this week's episode because it's all about personal branding, which is dear and close to my heart. Um, it gives me an excuse to be me and my authentic self. But I want to start this morning's uh, pod by just asking each of you individually, you know, what does personal branding mean to you? So I'm going to start with you, Judy, if that's okay. Sure. So I suppose... Personal branding, I think it's pretty much what people say about you when you're not there or other people's kind of your reputation, I suppose, I think is your personal brand. I think it's become more of a thing since social media became so relevant and popular. And yeah, it's I'm actually looking forward more to the other questions in this, like the what like kind of wrecks your head about personal branding and stuff like that like or or you know like what how would I describe my personal brand I think you've that coming up but like my one is I was just thinking about it earlier it's professional but it's also fun so it's funfessional as a personal brand and those two are kind of hard to merge you know because like professional and fun aren't supposed to kind of go together but like I need that fun element in order to be myself and kind of make the most out of what I do so yeah yeah. Oh, listen, I'm with you, girl. If it's not fun, don't do it. Jen. Um, I, I'm on the exact same page as Judy, to be honest. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. It's completely reputation based. And yeah, I, I don't actually have a huge amount to add to what Judy was saying because I was going to spiel off almost exactly what she said. Yes. So it is that blend of it. Personal brand, I think, is getting, you know, a, a bigger foot in the door in terms of the corporate world, in terms of, you know, employees having more flexibility around personal brand um but i think it's it's hugely important but it's a difficult one to crack i mean i agree thing. especially when it comes to employees and we'll definitely sort of mm. touch on that in a bit but um jay anything to add to that i think it's interesting because i don't think many people know like the regular Joe Soap and the, the whoever your audience are, they don't really understand what your, like I think personal branding is a marketing term that only marketers fully understand or think they understand what it is. Um, I don't, I still don't know. I still struggle with my personal brand. I still trying to like, that's why I was excited for this episode. I was like, yeah, I can, I can use this to fix my life and fix my problems. <laughs> but like, yeah, I think, I think what, what Judy and, and Jen said is, is, is crack on is, 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 is right on. But like, yeah, I think only the professionals know what like a personal brand really is, and at that, I think they're fucking they're 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 gaslighting us a bit as well. I think it's just figuring it out. I think just I think I think a personal brand is just figuring it out as you go, and then thank God it worked out, or not God, but whoever you want to thank. Yeah, actually, Yourself for the hard work. Yeah, exactly. Yes, <laughs> Queen. Yes. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's all about projecting your uniqueness. So we all have that unique identity that sometimes we're scared to show, but if you can 
be comfortable with yourself. So it is a journey, Jay. I completely agree. If you can be comfortable with yourself, your values and your strengths, then you can shine that uniqueness forward. I think where it gets really um, confusing for people is is like part of my what fucks me off about it, to be honest. Um, but I think, Jay, you might lead into that a bit because where you were saying there's some confusion with personal branding, like what would be, what annoys you about it? What fucks you off? I think it's the confusion really, as you, you hit the nail on the head there, it's confusion of it because I'm confused myself, let's say first that, right, I have different aspects. I have different um, stems of my business and I have different foundations I build off where like photography, videography, creative business and whatever it is. But at the same time, I'm like, but I'm not showing more video than I am showing more photo. I'm getting confused and I'm like, what should I be doing? Should I be more reels, more photography? Like just building that out on Instagram and TikTok and stuff. And then my audience is like, what's he actually doing? Because I love food. But then I'm like, if I post food, is it like not fitting in my niche? Like I hate this whole niche down into one thing. And yeah. like, I, I'm wrong to hate it because like Jane has niche down into one thing and it's dominated for her. So I don't know. I, it, I, I think I'm suffering because I'm not niching down and it's, it's confusing. And I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to sacrifice all the others for the one thing. I want to keep I going with the food. literally you know? had what fucks you off niching down. Uh, because like, you know, like I have a friend and she's got two accounts and one account is for one thing that she does and another account is for another thing she does. But then I think that she feels like then she can't post her at the beach yeah. and she's trying to be really specific. And then it's just really like, like, why can't we just be people? But yeah. As you said, Jay, that's not, unless, not what the people want. Unless we create that's a niche. That's not what like, the algorithm wants. Yes, yes. correct. Yeah. Uh, create a niche uh, day in the life of me. That's the niche. So when it comes to personal brand then, do you think of it being two-dimensional? Is it in, in a screen? Like, it, Well, see, pure example is you thought I was a prick when you first met me because you'd never met me. And that was yeah, the personal that brand. Wasn't too- that wasn't that was through first, Instagram. I know, but it was though. <laughs> it was though, wasn't it? Well, because no, it was actually brand because I, built. I saw you on Instagram. You were really vibrant. I was like, I'd really like to meet this person. And then we were actually working in the same space. But you used to walk around and I'd just be like, it's prick. <laughs> I was a prick back then. Yeah, I've grown a lot. I was a prick back then. And I, the that is came. so funny. It's like, was it because of Instagram? No, it was real life, Jay. <laughs> real life. <Sure>. You. <laughs> no, because like, it's, you know, like it's, it's, it's like at school, isn't it? I thought he was cool. So I was like, I'd like to speak to him. Like he's cool, but I didn't feel that he was approachable at all. Whereas okay. I know you very well and I know you're super approachable, but that was the personal brand that you were giving off. Yeah. And I, and I, and I am like, I, I was hoping, you know what? I'd probably stress off my head, Shan, because I was losing everything oh, at the time. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> you know I mean? <laughs> the, the whole house was burning to the ground. I'm like, Hey guys, welcome back to the final. Ha ha ha. <laughs> yes. But then that, so they, that is a really important part of personal brand because that wasn't authentic. No, you need, I, I needed to feel I was putting up a front. Just as I said to you, like when I was closing down, everyone was like, you're so busy. What are you talking about? I was like, it was all a front. I needed, I, I couldn't go on saying, lads, Huckleberries is struggling. Please come support us. Like, cause then I was like, that affects the brand where it looked like. But if I did that, who knows what we'd have done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I always tell a story in the last recession back in 2009, I'd opened a beautician's and beauty went down the pan, you know, straight away. People stopped spending a hundred quid on facials. Completely understandable. But I would bump into people and I'd be with my friend and she had a business as well. And we were both really struggling. And people would go, how are things going, Sean? I'd be like, absolute nightmare. I don't know how we're going to survive. You better get your ass in now. Go and get your nails done. Go and, you know, mm. come and support us. And my friend would go, oh my God, I feel sick. How can you tell her that? I mean, Sean, you know, you've got to keep this, keep things going. And I said, do you know what though? She'll just go and book her nails. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and she'll make me a bit of money. And when she comes in, I can tell her how awful it is because I can't lie. Mm. I but think my it's a very Irish lying. thing. My, well, I'll tell you the difference here now is my friend was lying, lost her business. It went down the pan. And everybody was saying to her, I can't believe it went down the pan. It looks so successful. Mm. I sold my business very successfully in the middle of a recession. Yeah. Because wow. I kept taking money because I was honest with people. This is a tough time. Get your ass in. I need your money. Yeah, I think it's a very Irish thing. Very yeah. Irish thing. Don't let don't, don't show your cards. Don't let anyone know how you're yeah. feeling. Don't let don't let the business don't don't let them know. Yeah. I, hate, I hate I actually hate it. Like, 
Yeah. Same. I mean, it was. I think in times of trouble, it's it's a it's a everybody thing. It was happening with my friends in the UK that had businesses as well. They were very much smoke and mirrors, and I was like, look, you've got to be honest with your clients. You know, I'm 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 probably sometimes overly honest. To be honest, to be honest. That's okay, though, I think. what I did. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know, like, you've written that down, uh, Judy. Was there other stuff that, like, gets on your nerves about it? No, that, that was the real one, though. Just like, you know, niche, niche, niche. And then, like, you're, I don't know, it's just, it's hard then to be yourself. You know, it is, it's hard to kind of post the things that you care about then. But I suppose, as we, we covered in a different time, like, Instagram stories is for where you post your personal stuff. And then your, your feed is kind of more the professional stuff, maybe. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it is tough. And I've, I feel sorry for other people who like have, can't move outside of their, their thing and expand into something else. Like, I don't know, like, as you said, though, Jay, Jen, you've like created a, an amazing niche. Do you feel restricted sometimes in it or are you kind of fine with that? No, I just think I'm not big enough yet for to unrestrict. So I was thinking a lot about this after the last episode and <laughs> kind of play devil's advocate here. I, what, what pisses me off is that people don't niche down to build their audience and flesh out a strong audience with their, maybe their top skill, we'll say, or their top like thing that they want to hone in on. Like when I get to a stage where the account is much bigger, then I'll be able to layer in a lot more of other things, I think, because it'll, it'll be able to expand easier in that sense. Like I get, I get a lot of messages and stuff being like, do you have a personal account? Do you do this? Do you do that? what's your business where like tell me what you do and I it's because I don't talk about all of that it's just like completely like two blinkers on just focused on AI tools um but I think like what's her name her name is escaping me there's another there's a big influencer and I started following her at around 100,000 followers and she just crossed 1.1 1.1 million or something and it's now only now that she's really fleshing out a little bit more of her personal content and I don't mean like what she had for breakfast I mean like she's I would go she's not controversial but she'd be semi-controversial I guess in the in the sense that she's like okay I'm off to the gun range um you know okay yeah, but, yeah. Uh, well, my yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um but it's only now she's starting to do those pieces of content because she's actually like starting to draw the tangents from her niche out into those things. So, for example, she's actually only going there because her husband was in the army and he's doing training at the moment and she's supporting him, getting involved with it and doing this kind of stuff. So there's you 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 start to see that. And then like the whole kind of like regiment of army feeds into her productivity to do X, Y and Z. So there's there's loads of avenues you can take. But I think you're not going to grow with the algorithms the way they are structured right now. If you're like open and have absolutely everything up there, I think you just have to niche down, tidy it up, get the audience and then flex outwards. Is what do I you think. think she do you think she's is she expanding to monetize, you think, or is it Cody naturally Sanchez, happening? Sanchez, that's her name. Sorry, it just came to me. Go again, no, Jay, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Cody Sanchez, do you think she's monetizing? She's she's expanding to monetize or do you think it's naturally happening? Naturally. I think, well, I think she's being strategic about it. I think she knows that the audience is big enough now that it doesn't matter. Like typically when, when you have like a piece of content that goes out, it should always hit at least 10% of your audience. But like 10% of my audience, I was kind of between the 10 and 13,000 mark. And that number of views feels kind of low on a video when you look at it against that. But if you look at like Gary V or Cody Sanchez or any of these bigger influencers, You'll see that 10%, you're not really noticing it. It's still 100,000 views or so, <laughs> or 80 to maybe 100,000. So they have the full flexibility now to kind of lean into the personal mm. brand because they know that the absolute baseline is still going to reach the, a viable amount to start kind of flexing it a little bit more into who they are, I think. And I think actually the top of my list of the fuck offs is um, people not understanding what, what it is. And we're, t- we're not, you know, we're talking about Jen. Jen's platform to me is not a personal brand at all. Jay, your platform to me is not a personal brand at all. Do you, do you know what I mean? They're not. Do you have business pages mm-hmm. on social media? They are not personal. They are about your passion for your business. You are the person behind that business, but that's not personal branding. Personal branding is taking you and your uniqueness and how you created that. So yes, I agree. Like I hate that niching down. I mean, 
I have two platforms. I have two platforms for a reason. It was always a personal branded platform, Sean Horn, on my social up till 220. And then obviously people wanted my help with business. So it became very everything. And I just don't want to talk about business all the time. So I just moved it because I'm just going back to what it was in 219. But everything on there is personal. It's my personal likes and my personal dislikes. It's my personal thoughts and my, you know, my personal travels, my personal food, my personal. Mm. And that I think we, we can get confused sometimes. Um, you know, for me, when I watch Jen, I watch Jen Bryan, the AI specialist. I don't know anything about her. Well, I do, but I don't. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That to me is now she's looking at With her the personal perception. Brand. That someone has by virtue of looking at that is the personal brand that I'm trying to build currently. Yes. Well, the perception mm. that people have, I can, so actually I was yeah. talk, talking, I hope your years have been, I was talking to, to a group of people last night and, and their perception is that you, you go for a walk in the morning and you spend all day on AI. <laughs> <laughs> True. So true. <laughs> this is exactly no. what I do, Shan. <laughs> You're actually describing my day. <laughs> Shut up. But do you know what I mean? Because that's the perception. My perception of Jay is all he lives in this amazing studio and just lives in a curated world. Hmm. Like there's just you know I mean, like that's what I'm saying. Like you live with an AR AR green screen behind you if I didn't know you. Does this make sense? Mm. Yeah. So what I think we have to be careful with the conversation that, you know, there is a massive difference between personal brand and your business brand. Um, and actually, funny enough, last night, somebody said something to me and I remember falling out with somebody once because I thought, look, I like to have the crack and my personal brand is my personal brand. And like you, Jude, if it's not fun, I'm not doing it. I don't want to be described as just funny. Mm-hmm. I want to be professional and funny. <laughs> like you said. And I remember a few years back, I was doing some work with someone and she, they kept describing me in my bio as just funny. And I was like, that's not good enough. There's more substance to me than just my humor. And if it's a work thing, you have to get that right. And that's really hard, but that's where authenticity comes in. Mm. Profunctional. That's the word. <laughs> and Shan, do you know your pages? Do you prefer yeah. creating content for your personal page or do you prefer creating it for your business one? Oh, personal all the way because it, I don't have to put any thought into it because it literally is just my day. Like, it's hmm. a vlog, really. Yeah. So would you, would you think this, I, I don't know if this is a ply or is this a good question or not, but it just came to my head there. Like the about me section on your website, yeah. is that your personal brand or is that... Like how many times have you actually gone to a website and checked out an about me web? Uh, page? I did with Jen's new website today. I was like, oh, about me, I wonder. And then I was like, picture of her. Oh, cool. Okay, I really like this. Yeah. So I so actually, like, it's such a notion sorry, board style one. It's uh, just up like, to two, two twenty, my website read completely differently. Then obviously two twenty to two twenty three, I you know I became a business coach and consultant because. I'm self-employed. I needed to earn a living, and that's where people really needed me the most. It was always my side hustle before. Um, but, and we're just rebuilding a new website now, which will go back to look very much like the website that I had in 219, talking about me more as a speaker and an MC rather than, you know, I mean, I've already made changes. I don't take on long-term clients. I just do power hours. That's where my brain works best. Um, but yeah, my, my website is, is hopefully relaunching in May and it will look completely different again. Mm. And probably look different again in two years' time. But yeah, that's so just it's ever, it's ever evolving. That about me section's ever evolving, and you think it is quite stuck to the idea of your personal brand, is it? Yeah, for me, we're going back there okay. without a doubt. I have a but, about me video on my website that I made during COVID, like during the early days where I was locked inside. And is that uh, the one with the, you as a kid and the story. Well, that's a one minute yeah. version that I made I for the club, actually. I love that video. Oh, I genuinely you. love that video. Like, I really do love that video. This is a longer, more drawn out person of it. And you know the way you put something on your site and you forget about it. Like the other day, someone was like, I watched that video on your About Us page. And like, I could feel the red coming out. I was like, oh <laughs> God, what did I say in that? Like, and I actually can't go back and watch it. I'm just like, it's there. People think it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> no, it's it's if you're listening, go check it out. Vidicamera.ie or .com? 
dot com, but no, not yeah. the about us page one. There's a, there's another right. one that I actually, you know what I'm going to do? Swap them before this goes out. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like we talk about uh, personal branding on social, is there any difference to you guys in real person? Like, do you show yourself differently on and off screen, Jay? Like, it was interesting. I find myself, if I'm talking to you over email or phone, it's going okay if you're a client, a potential client. But if I get you in a room, I, I'm closing you. I know for a fact I can close you. And I've been told by this before, like one of my clients is there. Um, one client recommended to another client, uh, which both have signed on, which is amazing. And they were like, you need to meet him. And then I met the new client and they said, yeah. I, I, I saw his website, I saw his work, I liked it, but I met him and... I'm in with them, like, yeah, definitely. So I definitely think in-person personal branding. If that was confusing, I apologize. I was like, I can't reveal names, but like, um, yeah, I just like to get in a room. Like I, even, even if an inquiry comes in, I won't email back. I'll call immediately so they can get a mm-hmm. tone of who I am and what I do. So it's just yeah. speaking and hear my voice, like, you know. So do you think that there's a difference, I'm going to ask sort of the same question, when you're in person with someone than when you're online? Uh, not anymore. It might be a smaller, dull down version for online, but it's not. Oh, hey, but if I'm, if I'm, because I swear a lot and I'm very, ah, fuck it, come on, we can do this now and this kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Where if I'm yeah. meeting, if I'm online, I'm like, I wouldn't be that exaggerated because I'm in a meeting, I'm getting the energy off the other person, and it's kind of running that way. But I think it's a small bit less exaggerated, but it is still me, Judy. I like I I have to have a phone call with someone if if a request comes through I'm like can you call me but that's more so that I can really understand what they're looking for and then design a proposal that kind of meets their needs and stuff like that and is very specific to them but yeah the phone call I'd never like even if someone they'll always uh, write to me and say can you just send me a quote and like I can't send you a quote until I talk to you properly mm-hmm. and yeah it does definitely work every time and and I love that part I love where you know, you get a bit of like the first like three or four minutes where you get a bit of insight to where the person is, what they're up to that day, kind of what their interests are and stuff. And, and I think that breaks barriers then. And you're like, OK, cool. We're, we're humans. We're not bots replying to each other. We are real people with real lives behind the scenes. And I think that helps. What do you think, Jen? Yeah, I I mean, I've sent I've sent many a proposal, but I'm jumping on on the call, and it's been it's been fine as well as blended. I I do get the feedback frequently that I'm a very different in person than what someone would perceive after going through my Instagram account. I think I'm a little bit quieter than people think. I'm not like stop using this until you yeah. <laughs> I'm not screaming. Stop, stop using coffee. things at people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think uh, a lot of people, by the time they reach out for a proposal from me, they've probably consumed a lot of materials already and have a perception and have like a run of it. And then sometimes they're they're kind of thrown off when we have a conversation. Not thrown off as in like put off, but they're like, oh, you're a bit quieter. You know, they, they'll they'll comment on on how they perceive me slightly differently. This really so this is really interesting. Event. And this is exactly what I'm saying to you earlier. So when they meet Jen, she's different. We know Jen, so we know she's different to that stop what you're doing. So her personal brand doesn't come through online. Is this making sense? It is, but it's also, I know for a fact that the other variation, like if I was just authentically like... It's not to say that my content isn't authentic. I'm not saying that. But if I was to put my authentic kind of robot almost voice sometimes onto my content and was like rolling out like lecture style. I have a fucking interest in following that account whatsoever. Yeah. Mm. No, absolutely. But I'm still back mm. to I don't know you. So yeah, is it but I don't think plan? that necessarily matters in the phase of the growth into what I can kind of after niching down. So like I think phase one is niching down growing an audience and then phase two of a personal brand is like right now I have a big enough audience to flesh this out and get people to kind of know me a little bit better. But if we go back a few episodes and we're talking about personality types and who we want to work with, can you like personal brand is super, super important. Mm. I don't work with, you know, with a couple of colors because I don't enjoy working with them. Um, so it's that needs to come across. 
Mm. So, and, and you do like in the morning, you go for your walk, I see your dog. That's part of your personal, that's something that you like to do. So I know that about you. I know you like the fresh air. I know you have a dog. You're a dog. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm looking for these, these messages. Whereas obviously mine is my personal brand is, is blatant. You know, you can't, yeah. but however, I don't ever do, you know, I stopped doing, um, would you like to work with me calls a couple of years ago? Because people know very well if they want to work with me or not, because I don't, <laughs> everything's there. It's all fleshed out. I'm really interested to ask, actually, when you do a um, a consultation or whatever, do you use phone or face-to-face as in Zoom or me? everybody? Would you oh, use Zoom. phone? Zoom. Oh, well, Google Meet. Yeah, Google Meet. Oh, apologies. <laughs> apologies. <laughs> apologies. Obviously. Don't trigger obviously me with Google a Microsoft Meet. Teams link, obviously. anyone, by the way. <laughs> I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, I hate teams. Um, Jay? Yeah, I, 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 I'm either. I, I kind of like phone calls, to be honest. But I'm, I'm either if they want to talk in person. Okay. Like it, it, I think it's impressive if they want to zoom and I set it up like I do sometimes for the podcast. It's yeah. like really well lit and it's like 4K. Yeah. They're like, oh shit. I'm like, yeah. What's yeah. up? Yeah. And you do <laughs> your your background is your pitch for, yeah. for what we do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oops. I, I saw. I saw your BTSN clean that room. <laughs> Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> Everything everywhere. I have cleaned actually since that picture. I just keep that to remind myself how good I am um, yes. now that it's clean. Uh, Judy, are you a phone person or in person? I, I, I'm a Zoom person, to be honest. Like yes. I, I, I live 25 minutes from the city. So if someone asks me to meet up in person, I'm like, can we just Zoom? Like always, you know. Um, yeah. but you then live, I in, you live in Cove. It's ages away. Like I'm on an island. Oh my god! I'm I'm on an island. You know, (laughs) people who don't know what Cork Cove is like fifteen minutes on a motorway to the city. Twenty-five. So I'm actually surprised you like the phone, Jay, because you just said in your last piece that when you meet somebody, it's easy for you to cross the line. I've never filled out a bank loan application. I've always just sat in the office and gone, "I need your money," and this is why I need your money. Bang, bang, Mm. bang, and I always leave with the money. If I need a sponsor, I pin them into a room and I and they can't say no. I never have used the phone. I've always hated the phone. I need to see your eyes. The reaction. Well, see, this is this is the confusing part for me because again, like you said there about booking calls and stuff, I I'm I I'm still torn to this day. Do I say work with me on my personal and Jay Woodard instead of Ad32? Like, and I'm putting links to you know, DM us or whatever. Like, I don't know. Obviously, I want to get business and I'm thinking, right, I'll, I'll leverage the bigger audience I have, which is across my personal socials, to work for Ad32, which is my company. But at the same time, I shouldn't be. I should be building Ad32 and anyone who works with me or likes my stuff will see that I work for Ad32 and then go that I, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? That's the kind of thing Can I'm I fighting. Can I you with. post first? Do you, if, it's, if it's business that you're looking to get, do you post on Ad32 and collaborate with Jay or do you no. go the other way? It's, it's, I don't collaborate at all, to be honest. I keep them separate and I want to keep them separate. I it want to keep. It doesn't sound like they are. Well, they are, no, the scenario, they are, I don't share. That's what I'm saying. I don't, like, I, I, different posts at different times. Like, I want to build my personal brand up as a photographer and a cinematic photographer and videographer. Personally, with our YouTube, my podcast, all the photo shoots I do with the models, that's not that kind of that stuff and all like other folks, that's not for Ad32. But then any work for Ad32 I do goes on that page, on the Ad32 page, and that's how, that's promoted up that way. I think you should close Ad32. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because you, it's, it's Can we not, just be it's, honest? I just got the Dada I just got it. I just got rid of the agency. Let's just be my authentic self. I, I, but, but you are Jay Woodard. That's what yeah. you do. And cool name. But the idea yeah. is I, I want to keep the name separate, like legally. I want to have a legal you can entity. Do that. You can trade as whatever you like. But what's the point of having two platforms creating this very, very, very similar content mm-hmm. I, but with I don't the same want, end goal I don't want to be putting bar work I don't want to be putting real estate work I don't want to be putting client work on my personal brand page that is for Ad32 and that's what that's building I don't want to, I, I don't want to have that I want a completely separate entity sorry I know this turned into a fucking therapy session for me apologies <laughs> <laughs> I actually think you should keep them separate interesting I and don't, really- I, as, a, as an onlooker is looking at it, I, 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 I don't see the separation. 
when well, I, look, and you know I think they're both excellent. Because yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see why, because why you'd want a, to. Because it's, it's your personal brand versus a showcase page. Like I'm looking at, at one of your accounts as a portfolio and another account as you create. Yeah, your account is always going to look, but any account you ever create is going to look stylistically similar because you're a videographer with a particular, like there's, I, I know yeah. a video of yours because you have a style to your content. And I think that is potentially why it looks, why, why there's a similarity there. But I do like the idea, and maybe it's a matter of just updating the bio to be like, here's my portfolio of, of client work or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think I have I, I have I have creative that. director and then the at at thirty two, but even client portfolio could be a good, better mm. wording. Do you know? I just felt I just felt like I need to separate. I don't want like if I'm doing just a street shoot with a model, like we did one at night the last time it was very cool. But I don't think I, I think I shared it after a while. I put it on at thirty two because that could come to magazine work or whatever that be. But I don't know. See, just see, this is my problem. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. But talking helps. And a lot of people yeah. don't know. That's why I think this will be really beneficial to a lot of people listening because a lot of people do have multiple accounts and are like, oh, this is actually really frustrating as mm. opposed to beneficial. Absolutely. Yeah. But can I ask something? So like, say on your Ad32, you've got a behind the scenes of you doing a food shot. Mm -hmm. Would you put that in your Jay stories of your day in? Uh, stories, yes, maybe. Because, it, because again, any client work... It? Yeah, because I've kind of removed what I've done. Firstly, is I've removed all reels from my grid because I want I that aesthetic. Because uh, I show I shared some of our stuff because I wanted the the grid clean. Like so, I'm, I'm trying to build that. Someone lands and goes, "Oh, these photographs are amazing." Then they click the reels and see all the different reels. Because on my personal one, I do all the how like not the how to, but the the gens, the stop, the different filters, all the kind of video and that kind of content. Because I want to build that personal brand that way. But I would never do that for Ad Thirty Two. It's just client work and it's just kind of a, a client portfolio. But on Ad32, my last question, I promise, why don't you sell Ad32? Why is it just what you've done? Why aren't you saying on Ad32 now, on your business mm -hmm. page, why aren't you advertising your services? Um, I th like. I think uh, it could be vain of me, but I like to think that the work is kind of showing itself. And if you want, because if you want to need a video or a photography, a, a product shoot, I don't need to be going... I do product shoots. I do photography. Check this out. Like you go to my page and you'll see this. You'll see our work. Like if you go to our website, same scenario. It's very showcasey kind of website. Shan is freaking. No, I just. <laughs> I'm not freaking. I'm just. I, I just know who I work with, and I know that they wouldn't understand what you just said because you only know what you know. So I would still get people ring me and say, Sean, I need a picture of a banana. Would do you know if Jay Woodard would be able to do that for me? So the message. But that's making it completely idiot proof though, because obviously if you've seen my work, you can well, see no, all the food really, chats no. I've done. Yeah. But if I go on to add 32, I go, okay, so he works with his niche is, because this is no, how people. If, if, if you go to add 32's website, you'll see people, food and drink, product, like you'll see the style of photography we do and then you can go to the niche. You can see then what it is. Yes. But I'm, I'm not talking about on your grid. I'm talking about, are you, you're not selling because you only know what you know. So some people would look at that and go, he works in those areas. And I've got a toy shop in Ballincollig. Could he work in here? No, he does, kind of does food and he does like, he's, he's a real artist. He does loads of like amazing photography and studio, blah, 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 mm. blah. I, I know it sounds like we're talking. No, I, get, I, I get what you mean. I do get what you mean. You just got to really simplify it. And when you simplify it, you've got to simplify it again. I tell people what I do every day, nearly, because they don't get it. Um, because I know it, I, f I forget that other people don't get it. Um, you know, we talked like we were talking about AI last week and people leaning into AI. Most people I work with have not gone anywhere near AI, but we th we're like, how can you not do that? Mm. Yeah, Jim, what do you think? I think Jen works with big people. I don't necessarily. I mean, I work from big comp like Series C right down to like early stage startup. But I just think that you're, if you're posting content, it should be marketing led, not sales led. And that would be my opinion of it. I think your your marketing in and of itself should should uh, should appeal to that. And you know, simplifying that message is always the crux of great marketing. But 
like I would never in a million years be like putting up the story being like I do this put a you know book a call this that and the other because I know it'll just fall so f- so flat in the content anyway if I was doing reels or anything like that around oh I actually do google ads as a service I tried it be- I tried those kind of things before and it just falls completely flat it's just it's not my like the type of lead, it depends on where you're at in your lead generation cycle, I think completely as well. I mean, that's fine potentially for certain companies like an e-commerce brand who's like, these are the earrings, this is where you buy them. Mm. Um, whereas like our cold outreach channels, our accelerator partnerships, things like that, like that's where we focus our sales efforts. And it's, it's it wouldn't be aligned in my industry anyway to be doing that, I don't think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As well, Shane, I think I see it as a bit of a filtration system because like I have a level, uh, uh, um, a minimum level of engagement between a thousand and fifteen hundred euro per project. So if like it, it's minimum spend has to be a thousand euro and a lot of a lot of smaller companies and a lot of small business won't be able to pay that or won't want to pay that for a photo shoot. Do you know what I mean? Listen, I completely get it. What I'm saying, I'm trying to link your pages. Mm. So for me, I'm like, I don't know what you do. Like on Jay, I just think, I think you're an amazing artist. I think what you'll do is, do you know what I mean? That's yeah. what I see. I don't know, like, who, like, look, we, we have to have a good bio, end of. Mm-hmm. But who's re- really sifting through the bio and then clicking up? You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is, is things like, if you're doing the behind the scenes on Ads 32, the link is stories. And so, you know, I, I had a, but you don't, do you talk much anymore? I'm not sure. I want to, I want to start again, but even if I just like day in the life of a shoot kind of stuff could work like this yes, kind of stuff. Yes, because that's mean? the link, because I think that there is confusion mm. because, you know, and I look at your, your beautiful artistry on Jay and then I go over and nine out, you know, six out of the, the top nine pictures are the same pictures from the other one. So then I'm mm. like, is this the same? Yeah. It could be a scenario where like on the stories and my personal saying, hey, head over to Ad32 for behind the scenes look at today's shoot or yeah. something. And, and I, look, I, I come from a different, slightly different world because when I was training in marketing, you know, it's 30 years ago, it used to be called sales and marketing because if you don't get sales from your marketing, you've got a problem in my eyes. There's got to be some sort of conversion and whether that's 50% of your marketing output, but there's got to be a conversion for small, medium Big business. They're always, you know, at the end of the day, there's got to be something happening to your bottom right hand corner to give you the budget to keep the marketing going. And, you you know, 10 years ago, a decade ago, it became separate, which makes life much easier for marketeers and much more annoying for salespeople. But mm. it was, for me, it was much easier when it was all bagged in together um, because you had to become a much smarter marketeer to get conversion and the understanding that it's not always about conversion. Do you know what I mean? That you mm. have to, but you, I think you've got to connect it some way, shape or form, because it, for me, it's like, diff, it's so different, it's separate, but so alike, it's together. Yeah. But there's, there's a piece to that puzzle there now as well, where it's like, okay, marketing absolutely has to aid sales. If those two pieces of the puzzle aren't talking, then nothing is working anyway. But it's totally dependent on where you are, even in your, the structure of your own marketing funnel. I mean, Jay, you've mentioned in the past that you want to like ID in an ideal world be full time creating content. For me, that means you're in such an early stage of of awareness and growth that you should be just so knee deep and leaning into the algorithm to flesh that out so that you can pursue that. Mm. And then would layer in the consideration of like engagement, this, that and the other, engaging the current audience you have. And I really need to start doing that piece of the puzzle. And then there's the conversion piece. And again, you could have the smallest audience in the world and have people ready to convert. It's not to say that like these two things are completely separate, but where your focus is, is probably largely dependent on like, do you need to grow 10% next month or do you need to grow your audience for your longer term vision of what you want to do? Is what I would. Yeah. What do you think, Jude? I think that like, I think that I probably shouldn't be spending as much time on Instagram and even this whole conversation, which is really interesting, is actually Instagram focused because that is the, that is the one that everyone wants to kind of master. But like, Mm. there's so many other ones out there. And like, I took a hiatus by going and trying to try out Instagram. And I was like, I'll make an online course for like smaller businesses, SMEs, solopreneurs that can afford it. And I'll do Instagram for that one. 
when really I just should have stayed on LinkedIn and I should have just stayed um, trying to like, you know, I suppose this, this leans into teach me something new and it's not new, but it's just getting down your why, your what, your key messages, your who you're doing it for, your, how often you plan to upload content and uh, what you hope to achieve out of it. It's like, like that, that's the first part of every workshop I do is getting that nailed so that you know what you're doing. And when I like went away from that, that's where I just lost loads of time. Now I have learned a lot and I have had fun and stuff like that, but you know, I probably should have just stayed true to the vision of, uh, and, and those, those core five W's. Nice. So if I think, if I, if, if we look at like what, we're going to go back to personal brand because we are going off kilter a little bit, but if we look at, you know, crafting our unique brand, our identity, what our values, our strengths are to create like a really memorable impression. What's top of your list that you do with your personal brand now to get that across? Judy. I help people simplify video. That's kind of my, my whole why. But not on okay. Instagram. Yeah, in person. I, yeah. Like. I think <laughs> is that is that a general question? Is that to us no, personally? That's a general, like when I yeah. think of personal brand, I'm not thinking. To be honest, when I think of personal brand, I'm not always thinking about what I'm providing. I'm thinking mm. about you know we we speak all the time about you can have a conversation with someone they they'll always forget what you said, but they'll never forget how you mm. made them feel, and that's such a massive part of my personal brand. Can I ask um, you a quick question, me, Chad, on, on, on that yeah. personal brand for, for yours? Do you think yeah. that personal brand, the style of content that is the only route to be authentic there is the, the vlogging style of content? As in like no. on the go, authentic, just, just like how do, you, how do you perceive the content creation process for personal brands that would say, like for example, I am interested in AI tools either way, which way, no matter what way I slice and dice the video, then I slice and dice it with the algorithm. But if I was kind of holding the camera up vlog style, would the perception of it be more personal brand than it is now is what I'm, do you get where I'm kind of coming from? Yeah, no. And then I I answer straight away. No, is the answer. Um, I don't think vlogging is the only way to get your personal brand across. My personal brand isn't online. I spend my life traveling meeting people in person and making them feel empowered to do the jobs that they do. So actually social media is secondary to my personal brand. So the vlogging comes after all the other work that I do. And most of my work is in person, on the road, sitting on a train, zooming people. I always uh, am in person. So actually that vlogging style for me is second when it comes to my personal brand. The stuff I do in person is top of the list. So it's actually off digital where my personal brand thrives the most. Yeah. Mm. That makes sense. But I think there's a way, you know, like for you, like for me, it's stories. I I, I see a lot of people that are very niched. Actually, Catherine from the Marketing Club does it really well. Mm. She, her niche is, you know, obviously marketing advice. It goes out every week. And then every Sunday, she just has a a personal recap of her weekend. And it's just a little reel. She puts it only on stories. What and it's just like about stories is I have nearly 6,000 followers and 89 people see my stories. Do you know what I mean? Okay, like there's guess, very Guess capped. how many people view my stories. How many? No idea. Yeah. Go on, get, take a guess. Uh, oh, 15,000, 20,000. Yeah. 10,000. Less than, th- less, maybe three to 4,000 I'd push. What? Really? So yeah. th- this is there's hilarious. Because there's, there's no point I, in putting content there at all. Like I'm only just, I'm almost doing the, the dog content. My almost numbers are the same as yours, Jen. Yeah, How many as, followers have you got? 180? 100, I'll, I'll, no, 132 is what I'll cross today. Okay, um, and, I, and I've 10. And yesterday I had 2,500 people on my stories. But I would have, so, I, gu- I guarantee you, once you get to 20,000 or as you scale out past this, it, it will start diminishing off. But the second yeah. piece of that is that I uh, I haven't cracked the story feature. The dog shit it needs to go, and like I just got to start <laughs> oh, doing I AI like content. I you love know, it. Fred. Maybe I'll get Fred involved in a few of the videos. Escape. Get Fred's oh, cool. page. Get Fred an AI page. Fredai.com. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think Fred with stories, what you have to remember, Jay, 
is I'm I'm not worried about the 130,000 or the 10,000. I I'm in worried that the people that are engaged and are interested and and they are the people that watch my stories, fortunately or mm. unfortunately. They the people that watch my stories are the people that all comment. And you know, so it's true. So does it's better to have 89 engaged people that are really interested and they're watching and they won't watch every day. You know, if I if I am selling something online, 21 days, like every day, chatting, chatting, chatting. Um, but not too much, not, you know, a quick hmm. flick on if you'd like to miss this bit. But um, but yeah, look, it, it's, I, I think it's a nice way for people to see a little bit of the background. And like I say, if someone doesn't want to show too much, I always actually use Catherine as an example, because it's just a little snippet into mm. her normality. Because uh, otherwise people might think all she does is sit on the computer all day doing marketing. And she doesn't. She's mm. a human. She's yeah, she's yeah. normal. Like, um, yeah. So to give me, give me then the, the, oh, what can you teach me? I'll start with you, Jude. Well, uh, do you know, I would, uh, this is a little bit of a teach me, but it's, it's off topic. Well, it's, it's on the topic of branding, but I just finished Matthew McConaughey's audio book and it has to, you have to listen to it as an audio book because he does the voice and he, you'd fall asleep does, now. We oh no, you wouldn't. To I it. You no. wouldn't. And, and every time something good happens, he's, he's like, green light. And it, oh, it just, it just warms your soul. But Matthew McConaughey was known as the shirtless rom-com guy hero kind of thing. And he didn't want to do it anymore. And it took him two years. He had to step away and refuse all of these scripts huge budgets that he was like, Money. like reading them. And he actually liked the script and he was like, I'm going to get paid so much. This could actually set me up for life. And he had to say, no, 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 no. And he, he was at the end of his tether. He was like, it's not going to happen for me. I'm just going to have to, I don't know, do something else. And then all of a sudden a script came in with a serious role. But like even Matthew McConaughey, like people couldn't see him outside of the rom-com, but by disappearing and vanishing for two years, then what he said is that all of a sudden he became a good idea, whereas he was never a good idea. But then one day after two years, and it was a long, grueling two years, but it was a good idea. And he changed his whole career and became the man that he is today. So I, I loved that. I thought that was really, really cool. The reconnaissance, isn't it? The reconnaissance. And right. So the reconnaissance, he was like, I actually made that up. He was like, I was, he was doing an interview with Unbelievable. someone. Unbelievable. And the interviewer said, uh, or he said to the interviewer, yeah, I was in an under, another interview last week and she said, uh, it was kind of like a reconnaissance, but he's the one who actually made it up. So I was like, genius. Yeah. It's brilliant. If we can tag brilliant. Matthew McConaughey. Jen? This. <laughs> oh yes, tag him, tag him, tag him. <laughs> Jen, you teach me. Um, I think what it, I don't have one prepared necessarily, but I'm just going to dive into the, I see personal brand isn't really my area of marketing at all when it comes to like the brass tacks of, you know, segmenting down within the marketing niche. But I think if you are, take a big step back as well from looking at the platforms, like we've again, gone very Instagram heavy on this and that's totally fine. but. I still get more of my lead flow for agency via LinkedIn, where I have less than 10% of the audience size that I do on Instagram. There's, you know, when it comes down to the brass tacks of numbers, is it as viable or valid for me in terms of agency work? You know, no. Is it via, is it valid top of funnel content that leads to smaller sales and looking at, you know, secondary or third streams of income? Absolutely. But that is being fleshed out mm. specifically for that. Like you don't really see mention of my marketing agency and things like that on Instagram because they were all there. And when I re as soon as I realized that it wasn't going to convert through a funnel for that instance, not nah, out the gap um, for that, focusing on a different monetization strategy. So think carefully about the difference between the vanity of, of a channel and the revenue potential of a channel. Mm. Amazing. Jay? I think uh, my teach me is to have visual components that are extremely flattering, like personal branding photo shoots, like just mm. content that is like, Jen, your video stuff is class. Shen, I saw you posting stuff from a personal shoot you did a few years ago. Like you just have really good content that you can layer over if you have to, like messages or notes or polls or whatever it is. It's just have a very good 
catalog if you can. I know some people don't like getting from the camera and they don't want to take photo shoots and stuff. But as Shan has a hack with the Airbnb thing, which is phenomenal. Shan, do you want to say what that is? Just if someone wants to yeah, so know, I- I'm, undercut- I'm, I'm, I'm undercutting a lot of photographers here, but it's still. <laughs> but it's, you know what? I'm a, a lot of. If you don't have the budget. A lot of photographers do this in their spare time. I've got a couple of hacks that I use for getting free photography. One is come up with a very good story, get yourself in the paper. They will provide you with a local photographer for the newspaper. Um, It gives you something just to store for another time. But Airbnb is a great one. So whenever you're going away for the weekend, I lose my husband for a couple of hours and I employ a photographer to take uh, pictures of me. It can cost you anything from like 40 euro to 150 euro. It's an option. It's an option on the Airbnb, isn't it? Yeah. So when you go Airbnb, you go either where do you want to stay or experiences. And experiences are like your food tours, but there's always photo shoots in there. And they'll do like couples romantic photo shoots and all this. Um, I did that with my husband once. He's going to kill me now because I've mentioned it on the pod. We did it in Lisbon and he said, I am never doing that ever again. <laughs> so so <laughs> since then, wants just be I've like, done Hi, it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should have a sound effect wherever he's mentioned it goes, Hello, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I met him after last week's recording. I went, oh my God, this happened. And he went, stop, don't tell me because it will ruin Monday. Because <laughs> he just loves the pod. But anyway, um, yeah. So yeah, you can so go into experiences. You'll find a photographer. You see one or two, see what you like. Have a little chat with them and book yourself uh, a little branding shot. Uh, mm. They don't know it's a branding shot. You're just going around the city, but it's really handy. And it's a really good way to stack your stuff. Um so that, if, you're gonna, yeah, if you can afford a better photographer, not a better photographer, but a bigger branding shoot, do. Yeah. And I think, Jay, you'd agree with me. Don't get to go to someone that's going to give you 60 pictures. Yeah, no, I think you need, well, sometimes I give a lot of pictures, but I think that's, I like variety for people, but like, I think, yeah, yeah just have an idea of what you want to do and talk to the photographer about it. But even yeah. whatever it is, even if it's a video, just have content for yourself that you can just put out on the days. If, you, if you're not willing to hop in front of the camera that day and you're too busy, whatever it is, have content scheduled out and just, because as you said, your face, people buy from people, your face reminds you, you're top of mind, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And my teach me is to remember that is a brand in shot. It's not your personal brand. You need to understand that it's about you and your authentic self. Your personal brand for me, and this is actually, we spoke about coaches the other week. This is where I, this is the bit that I love coaching people in because a lot of people, you know, understanding your personal brand is a, is a journey of self-discovery. Um, and you have to be happy with yourself to portray yourself. Um, and understanding mm-hmm. that and that we're all unique. I mean, I, people say to things like, oh, Sean, I'd love to be like the Irish Mel Robbins. And I'm like, but you're not Mel Robbins. Or Sean, God, you you talk to all these small businesses. You're like the, the, the Irish Holly Tucker. And I'm like, I'm not Holly Tucker. <laughs> I'm Sean Horn. And I'm bloody happy with that. And so sometimes you need some help with that. And I think that's really important. And finally, I suppose we've done the teach me. With everything that we've chatted about today, and, and Jay definitely owes us all a bit of money for his yeah. counseling session. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I dominated this podcast. I really apologize about that. But, no. but with, with all of that in mind, what is the one thing you think you would like to do this year? What challenge are you going to set yourself? What goal do you want to take your personal brand to the next step this year, Jen? It's interesting that you say that because I don't necessarily have any particular goals around my personal brand because the core focus like I do these 100 day blocks of different things I'm on like different days of different ones at the moment for myself but I actually just don't talk about them on social at all there there's a lot of this stuff that is just like almost for me at the moment that I haven't dug into and maybe part of that might be to go back and reassess it and see if those are some of those would add a more personal touch to my own to my own content so look at that again and look mm. at how those goals are structured around that Oh, Judy Russell. Do you know, I actually feel like I am personal enough at the current level. And do you know, like I've got a big job coming up now where I'm going into a company training 50 of their employees to make videos and about us video about that company and the winners win a trip to Vegas. This is the kind of stuff that I want to be doing. So instead of not posting anything about that company, because I'm like, maybe the company isn't going to be okay with me taking pictures in here. I'm going to have the conversation with the company. May I use this as a case study for future jobs? As a book, because like there's so much that I do that's hidden. 
And I'm like, okay, this is the stuff that I need to be talking about more, not about I'm like cook, making bread with porridge. You know, it's it's fun and I can do it at home, but like, you know, I, I need to actually go the other way, I think a little bit more. Would you way. would you have someone for BTS for you on the day? Can you Great do idea. that? Like, just for I, you, can, do you know what I mean? Just bring someone along that shoots BTS for you on the day and you teaching and stuff. This is my person. They were me. They're shooting content for me. Like once it's agreed ahead of time, because that would be class for you. Like just Great for idea. Your, the academy and stuff, I, you know? But, you know, and it's funny, Jay, because I have done that in the past, but um, it was the wrong person. <laughs> yeah, and up, I, head, yeah. Images, like that. You actually yeah. have to get someone who kind of knows, like you can't just get like, you know, a student of, of creative yeah. Something it's about, to do. It's, yeah. Like, yeah, it's about yeah. firing, not about the hiring. Remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a great idea, and thanks for putting that into my head. Yeah. And actually, just in case anybody doesn't know, BTS is behind the scenes. Oh yeah, nice. sorry. Thank you, Shane. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Jay. Shane. Jay. Um, I, I'm going to say it, lads. Niche down, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to take Jen's approach. I think I'm going to start focusing more and just niching down on what I'm doing, and then building an audience that way, and then at a certain milestone start expanding out where from it's almost like you get the privilege to be yourself if you do the niching down well yeah, enough isn't it so much <laughs> yeah especially with me because like, like like photography like but again do you niche down to just photography or do you niche down to videography and photography is it like you're a creator think, or what's it, the like you, like how does this? you could you could i mean imagine if i just said well why don't you just niche down to, into just content creation <laughs> and you know either or depends on what label yeah, yeah. you stick on us yeah yeah true true <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it's a label, isn't it? So yeah, I think that's I, I'm going to look at Jen's approach and hit certain milestones ideally, and then grow that way. Because I would, I do want because with that will come like ambassadorships and partner products and like all this kind of gear reviews. It all kind of fits under that world of content creation. Yeah. Um, but it does like so. Yeah, that's what I'm going to look at. It does, and actually, I suppose when you when you talk at that, like I've done it in completely the reverse, <laughs> did yeah. it completely arse end up because I did me first, and now I'm moving my business, and I and I'm enjoying that. And actually, my task for myself this year is I've become my personal brand has become so diluted in the other businesses that I run in the club and in Elite Pilates. This year, it's about me. Um, I'm going to be extremely selfish. I think I've told you before, I'm going to get a t my T-shirt is ready to be printed. I'm so sorry, I can't do that. But please don't hate me um, because I want to really concentrate on my personal brand and the fun that I'm having with it. Um, so yeah, anything to, to, to leave on, guys? Any words of wisdom? You should get a T-shirt as well saying, we'll run naked down the street for attention <laughs> or, or publicity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What are you I'm saying? Gonna, all publicity, cheeky. Uh, I got a text message from Keith Only who just PR. listened to last week's podcast and he said, I'm Keith, or he said, I'll be flat out. We'll work from this. Thanks so much. I'm meeting with Jay to, uh, next week. Oh, and yeah. P.S. I'll need to find a good way to sign my name for all the autographs. So Go thank on, you. Keith. Thanks, Keith, for listening. Amazing. Appreciate it. Amazing. Just, I'll just throw it in there, Keith. We need, uh, we're, we're looking for a new sponsor, guys. <laughs> so if you are interested in sponsoring, then that would be great. And if not, please like, share, um, and come and follow us. And don't forget, personal branding for me is all about showing up um, and making people feel amazing about themselves. So thank you so much, guys. Really enjoyed that episode. And we'll see you next week. See you later. Bye.